Hi, this is Boris. Welcome to another episode of Sketchman Draw. So this is uh, part of the series that I do where I look at comic books, Bond Dessinée, so in this case Bond Dessinée, which is a French um, comic book. Um, the very famous Asterix and Obelix, and this is Asterix at the Olympic Games. Um, as, you, as you can see, this is a used copy. I don't really mind, I just love reading comics, so... Uh, and I don't. I mean, I buy. I, I I buy these used copies because I don't. I don't have money to buy new ones. <laughs> I'm trying to save. Um, so uh, I, you know, for those who don't know, I've studied in a French uh, high school in India, and then I went to. I lived in France for like about seven, six, seven years. Uh, I I did my. I I mean, I was uh, doing my higher studies in university there, and um, so. When I was studying in uh, high school in India, uh, of course, we had a library with French books. And, uh, of course, we had Bon Dessiné, we had Tintin, uh, and, of course, we had Asterix and Obelix. Um, so this is written by René Guccini um, and uh, illustrated by Albert Uderzo. And uh, so these are, I think, for those who don't know, like usually Bon Dessinés are like self-contained stories about familiar characters. So... Uh, so today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Not only am I going to look at the art and how the storytelling is done, uh, but I'm also going to uh, look at the whole story. Like I'm going to give you the important plot points uh, so that it's also sort of, I, I think that's a little bit more entertaining than just me going randomly through how this was drawn and that was drawn and so on. Um, I also have my paper in case I have to show something uh, like draw something and so on. Okay, so having said that, um, I'm also doing this after I've done um, uh, Buddha by uh, Osamu Tezuka. So you might have uh, noticed uh, some similarities when I was looking at that, like the way I reacted, which is, a, so for example, here we have a map of France, uh, and uh, so, of course, France under the Roman Empire. And so it's the it's the exposition because uh, it's it's a really great one because every you don't have to read them in order. Um, but it, when, if you read one, you will get the initial story, the background of the of the story. So uh, the year uh, fifth. Year is 50 BC. Gaul is entirely occupied by the Romans. Well, not entirely. One small village of indomitable Gaul still holds out against the invaders. So this is a very, um, of course, this is translated into English, but this is a very iconic sentence that you find in every beginning of the Asterix and Obelix books. And of course, here we have the. So to sort of, um, I have uh, the Buddha here. So, you know, this is like, this reminds me of this one, like the, when they introduced the map in the beginning. And the other thing they do is uh, give a short bio of, uh, I'm trying to avoid the uh, glare there, um, like a bio on uh, characters. Um, of course, Asterix, Obelix, um, this is Getafix. So, uh, of course, uh, Asterix, Obelix, uh, in English, they are the same, uh, but... Um, in, uh, in in French, they have different... So, Asterix and Obelix, of course, in French and English, there's the same name. But Getafix, uh, his name in French, if I'm... I'm trying to remember, it's Panoramix. And, uh, for example, the dog here, it's uh, Dogmatex. Um, in French, it's Idefix. Um, Idefix means a fixed idea. So, you know, they, they have these little wordplay with their names. Um, so, uh, so... You know, as usual, we show the, um, um, usually it starts with the goal, uh, introduction to goal, but here, uh, okay, we have, we see the village of the goals here, and then suddenly we cut to the Roman camp, um, and the, the, the news comes in that there are, the Romans are some, somehow, for some reason, really happy, and, uh, and the goals are being uh, starting to suspect, like, oh, if they are happy, uh, there must be something wrong. It's not, it's not good for us. And uh, but they don't. I mean, they don't. They decide not to do anything about it. Uh, and then you find out that you know they have this really great champion, and um, 
and and I would just like to put some <laughs> notes here. Uh, first note is like I don't know what what is this numbering. I think it's for like panels, but I don't know. Like there are these numberings here. I don't know why. And I was just going to pay attention to like even if it's cartoony, like it is really well drawn musculature. I think I feel like. Um, so um, you know, so everybody is expecting, of course, Julius Caesar will be pleased if the Romans win at the Olympic Games. Um, and, uh, so, you know, he's being like, you know, they give him all the treats and, uh, and he says, oh, okay, I have to go and train. So, <laughs> Wait, what did I write here? Um, ah, here, um, when I notice something that, so for example, I really love looking at like comic book theory or narrative theory, whatever. Um, and here, um, and especially like when people say like, oh, this is how the eye goes. I've never actually experienced it. And I mean, so this was just a small little thing. Like when I was reading, so of course, like, you know, of course you, I read from left to right, right? Because it's a, it's a, it's a bon dessiné. And here for this panel, I started reading here. And then instead of going here, I, I went here, right? So, so I thought, Okay, that's uh, maybe they didn't have a maybe they didn't plan properly the panel here, um, but I just I don't know I just thought that was a little little but that I don't mind I just I just oh okay I have to come back here and then I read like this, but um, that was one thing where I was like oh like you know it does matter like it's not um, you have to keep in mind the placement of the bubbles which actually as an artist who writes uh, his own stories and. Or co writes his own stories in, for web comics or comic books uh, or the comic strips that I make. Um, now I'm starting to pay attention to that, but in the beginning I would just draw because uh, that's that was the interesting part for me, the art. And then I would place the bubbles later on, which I think is not a great idea. So in the, usually, like beginner artists, cartoonists do that. So just a little thought there. So, so the Roman champion says he is going to train. Of course, he comes across Asterius uh, Obelix, and you know he's saying to himself, "Oh, he's the fastest." Um, um, I just put like <laughs> this is a, this is a great anatomy. <laughs> I just like uh, and um, and this is also like really interesting characterization. So this guy is like super confident and his whole confidence is based on the fact that he's a champion and he was selected as the best of the best. And when he realizes that like these two guys, like one fat guy and one small tiny guy could run as fast as him, he starts to lose his confidence because everything that he believed was <laughs> standing on that thing. And I feel like it's a really good psychological or even philosophical view on like behavior. Um, and I, I, I really thought that was a really interesting characterization for this guy, even if like, you know, this, uh, I wouldn't call him like three dimensional character, but, um, and then he starts to, you know, like, Oh, um, uh, like if, if I'm not the fastest runner, I mean, I'm the, I'm the greatest. And he's not, he throws this, like he he like takes a breaks a tree and throws it and then uh, so this is almost like this three it is almost like a really great gag. He throws it, he waits for it, and then he gets hit with a, like a bigger tree that um, probably Obelix threw. Um, and again, even the like this is a great great anatomy. Um, and uh, so you know, like so so he's like. He's really broken, and he gets even really angry, and then he starts to fight, and of course he's easily beaten by Obelix. And uh, he goes back to the camp, and he's like, you know, he's, uh, he's completely lost his, um, he's com completely lost his uh, uh, confidence. Um, so I just put here like great way to show the circling, and this is um, Obelix. Um, hitting like this with this panel and the guy flying off with the, um, it's really iconic. So, uh, he goes by the camp. Okay. He's lost confidence. And so the, so the leader is, uh, this, uh, this guy is worried. Oh my God, like Julius Caesar will be unhappy. 
blah, blah. So he said, okay, I'm going to talk to them. So he go, comes to the Gold's village, which again, I remind you, that is one of the, the only village that is resistant to the Roman Empire. And um, so now he's like, so the, uh, how do they call him? I think they call him in English, they call him Vit Vital Statistics. Is that so the, yeah, vital, vital statistics. <laughs> so why is that he's taking a bath? And um, so you say, like, you know, please, like, don't, you know, don't bother us and blah, blah, blah. And then um, uh, <laughs> and then they get an idea. So they say, OK, um, they were talking about some Olympic games. So maybe we should join them. Right. So then so this is where like Asterix and Obelix decide to join the Olympic Games. And I just took note of like the like really great way of portraying nodding. And you'll see this in many other like instances where they they nod like this. So uh, so th okay, this is the point where they decide to uh, join the Olympic Games. And you see you back at the camp. This guy is like completely lost his mind. Like he's just starts sweeping, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm just. This is all I'm good for." And uh, and then so the goals come into the Roman camp, and they sort of inform them that basically uh, they're going to join the Olympics. And now, so the the guy now is even more scared because uh, <laughs> you know that they're doomed. Um. So. Mm, so I think that I forgot. Um, okay, so then he... Uh, ah, so, okay. So, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. That. Um, they basically say the, that the Olympic Games are reserved only for Romans. Um, and then they go back, oh, that's too bad. And then they go, and then they, they, they do. And then Asterix says, yeah, but we are Romans because... We live in the area that is conquered by, that's part of the Roman Empire. So we are Romans. And then, uh, so like, oh, okay, great. So there's no, and then, so, you know, so since he realized that they are not going to join the Olympic Games because they were not Romans, uh, this guy gets his confidence back. Um, uh, so... And... Um, <laughs> Um, and then the and then he hear the in the Roman camp. So he's training. He's hitting like he's like um, overpowering all the uh, Roman soldiers. And uh, you see, like there's a parade of uh, like goals, sort of screaming and cheering that they are Romans. So um, <laughs> and so now the, 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 he's going to say like, oh, okay, we we have to start sweeping because. We are doomed. Now the goals are going to join the Olympic Games, so we don't have, uh, we don't stand a chance. Okay, so then here they start uh, training, and um, I just took note of here, which I think I'll also do a tutorial about, which is like the posture, like the hand gestures, because I I'm guilty of it myself, which is I so, sort of tend to use the same sort of hand gestures, and you know, like like this, like this bent and this leaning forward and this uh, like posture is really interesting i think because i usually like you know uh, like the when someone is speaking you go to the go to gesture that is like you know people saying this and then something comes out of their mouth and you know just going out of your way and this is why i think um, observing people like in like normal situations like in cafeteria and in bus stops and so on and they're talking it's really interesting so you get some ideas of the way people naturally gesture when they talk, okay, or some people in some cultures people don't act gesture at all. So that's uh, you know that's another point. Um, so they uh, they get the magic potion, they train, um, and uh, but finally you know like so just to jump a little bit ahead, um, they pack and they go, um, and um, so this is <laughs> really great. Um, uh, really great gag where they say, "Oh, we have uh, we found a boat that will take us to the Olympic Games, and it's only one class, and it will be really comfortable." And then the guys, so this guy is basically exploiting them. He's asking them to row, like he's basically giving them the 
the the seat that usually reserved for like slaves right like um and then here i was just took note of like oh I, so he's really mad so he's like cursing because this is not what they were expecting but you know like the goals um so he's like oh i'll put some music so then they they start drumming and this is like one of the running gags in the series which is each time they come across a pirate <laughs> pirate galley pirate ship and uh, you know these guys are always they get always get beaten up by Asterix and Obelix, so they're really scared of the goals. And uh, so, for example, whenever he sees that that's a it's a ship full of goals, like so they they instead of getting beaten by goals, they just sink their own ship in order to save themselves from the beating. Um, so yeah, so they go to um, Athens. If I'm not mistaken, Olympics at Athens, right? Um, and then suddenly, like you know, so he's like, uh, "Hey, Asterix, um, look at their profiles." You know, like so, you know, they, you know, because they're Greek, uh, <laughs> they are drawn in a slightly different way. Like the, it's like look at their profiles, and I think really, it's a really great. Um, again, um, Uderzo is really great as like this cartooning. Um, I really love his like it's a really appealing style, which I think has become. It's sort of uh, like a like a cousin style, if I if I might say, to most uh, like cartoony humor, uh, bande dessinée from France, and uh, even I think has influenced in uh, Europe. So um, they uh, so <laughs> Geriatrix is this old guy that is like you know like the cliche of the old pervert. So he's looking at young women. So, and again, great. Uh, I think, so this is also like part of like why I sort of make, uh, why I uh, did this after Buddha, which is I think I find the same kind of traits, uh, almost like uh, they are like uh, distant cousins, which is uh, take like a historical backdrop and use like some historical facts, but then tell the entertaining story. So, and you know, like, I mean, these, I mean, Bondi Cine is not only for children, but it's entertaining for children. As, as a child, you read this, like, you know, you, you sort of see what you have learned in history, but at the same time, you get a really funny, entertaining story. Um, so, yeah. So again, I was just saying, like, uh, I was just commenting, I was just uh, paying attention to the horses here. So, so these horses, I don't know if I'll have money to buy that, but I I, I need to buy Lucky Luke, which is also a Bond Disney that I used to read for free at the library when I was in high school. Uh, there were also animated films based on the Bond Disney series. So again, great, great face. So uh, okay, I don't want nothing specific here um, and um, okay so again since I was saying like here like the you know showing some uh, I think reconstructing some uh, like in one of those historical documentaries like the different buildings where things take place and uh, and they give you some historical knowledge also like so he's saying like the and finally the stadium the track uh is 192.27 meters long that is to say 600 times the length of the foot of Her heracles which allows us to calculate that the demigod took about size 11 in shoes so you know so the the use uh the unit of measurement was uh, different back then so they are um and this is interesting this like light coming in um, digitally, you would use the filter glow dodge. <laughs> That's a, like a cheating, <laughs> not cheating, but like, it's easy to do that. Um, so then, like, you know, he, they say, so, you know, because this guy has known Asterix and Obelix and how strong the goals are. So, you know, he's like saying, like, oh, I'm, we'll lose definitely. And he's saying that to his trainer. And okay, so of course, like, they're worried that Julius Caesar will not be happy. I also took note of the difference in lettering. So when the Romans speak, they have a different lettering. Uh, oh, no, sorry. When the Romans speak, they don't have a different lettering. But when the 
uh, Greek speak. They have this Greek um, like font, which I think is really interesting. So they're going to register. Okay, so their goal is register to the Olympic Games. And um, so, you know, there are, this is always like a running gag, like in all the series, which is uh, each time. Okay, let me maybe. Oh. Okay, I'm just trying to find a way to <laughs> remove this glare, but. Okay, anyway. Um, so, uh, um, you know, there's always one guy who um, doesn't know about Asterix and Oblique. So, you know, for example, he challenges them for wrestling. And then, of course, Asterix drinks his potion and just hit, like, beats him with one hit. And this is interesting. Like, when he's just drawing random people, they're basically the same character, but in different postures. So since the Romans are desperate, they say like they, they just say to themselves, okay, it's 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 no it's no use training because we know that the goals are going to win. So just this, they start drinking and eating and uh, and the goals, you know, they are also confident, so just they are taking a nap. But the Spartans, they are uh, training really hard, and then the Spartans uh, who are living just next to the Romans are smelling the delicious food the Romans are eating. So the Spartans rebel. They say like we won't eat and blah blah blah. And uh, um, mm -hmm. and then they uh, there is a magistrate of the Olympic Games. They decide that we need to talk to these Romans because uh, we can't allow this. Uh, any uh, substance, uh, sub like taking substance, is not allowed. So again, we get into the like the modern day connection of like um, like drug issues in sports, like in Olympic Games. So this uh, member of the magistrate goes to the Romans and says, you know, you can't drink like this because if you, uh, if you are drunk during the games, you'll be disqualified. And this suddenly gives an idea to this guy because he knows about the magic potion that the goals will be drinking. So then he, um, he basically, yeah, he says like, oh, like uh, these goals are taking something called the magic potion to win the game. So how is that fair? And you know, so... And then so he's like, oh, okay, so that's, you, you can't take a magic potion, that, that's illegal. So, so then like Romans get really happy, you know, like, oh no, they, like now stop drinking, we have to train because the goals are going to lose because they are not allowed to drink magic potion. So, and, there, and the goals are a little bit, um, you know, they're a little bit sad, like, oh, we, we thought we'll win for sure. But then they start training, um, and this is a little funny thing, like everyone dreams of being winning and we also see dogmatics, edifics, uh, dreaming of getting a bone. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so the game start and, uh, you know, all the, so they, the, the players come in and there is a sprint and Asterix, uh, I think comes like, I think fourth or something. So he doesn't quite win. Uh, but, uh, but then at the end, um, um, so they, they just go through like different games like boxing, wrestling, and this is interesting. Like the uh, so uh, the, here's another example of nodding, like the like saying like no, uh, no way, uh, because you know he's saying like, um, well, in view of your brilliant results, do you think Julius Caesar is going to be pleased? And then he's like, no, no, no. Um, so the magistrate here. It's, <laughs> It's interesting. It shows like the politics uh, the, um, behind uh, the magistrate's decision. So he's like, we should let at least one foreigner win because otherwise they won't come to the Olympic Games. Um, and oh, and also, uh, so for example, and as my cousin Diabetes puts it, Diabetes was actually the guy in the beginning who was the guide. I didn't, I didn't. Call, it was just a, a detail that was not important to the plot. So I didn't mention it. Uh, so as my cousin Diabetes puts it, no more tourists, um, uh, no more tourists, no more money, no more business. Our beautiful monuments will fall into ruin. No one will ever want to look at them, which is you know, like funny, of course, because they do become ruins that people visit. Um, so, you know, so they decide to add uh, one more game. And here they, uh, they want to, uh, the goals want to trick 
the Romans to drink magic potion. Okay, so that so they keep saying this, you know, yes, the cauldron in the shed over there with the door that doesn't shut properly, the one that isn't guarded by night, would that be the one you're talking about, Obelix? You know, like you know, he's like very leading them into doing something wrong, like drinking the magic potion. Of course, Obelix doesn't get it. And the night falls, and of course, um, as you might have guessed, like the Romans drink the magic potion. And the next day, during the, uh, the race, um, they, of course, the Romans win. But then the, um, uh, so then the, they catch him in, uh, <laughs> uh, they catch him, they say like, oh, um, one moment, they, these, an objection. Uh, these Romans have, you know, drunk a magic potion that made them win. And then he's like, you know, like Asterix is taunting them and then they open and their tongues are blue. So he's like, look, I added some permitted color, coloring matter to the cauldron of magic potion. Those who drank it all got blue tongues. So then, okay, so then uh, we come to the end of the story, which basically makes Asterix the winner. And uh, basically, uh, of course, uh, it ends with as it all the stories in Asterix Obelix end, which is like a big feast where they celebrate their victory and and this is a really nice like don't tell the others but i gave it to someone so he gave the laureate to the basically the the guy that uh in the beginning that was uh beaten and you know so he shows it to the julius caesar and julius caesar is happy and they get promoted so i don't know it's a, like a sweet gesture like every everybody wins um so that, that's the Oh, wait, I forgot to mention maybe one point. What is this? Oh, okay, sorry. Interesting. So, so again, I, I didn't uh, mention it because it was not part of the story, but I really like this. Like, they get really drunk and they got hiccups. So, so for example, uh, one last uh, or horn, like, you know, and, and then like you also hear like this. <laughs> I thought that was interesting that I could keep also for my own stories. Um so yeah, this is Asterix Obelix. I really love the art. I really love the story. Um, I just, I mean, this is the only, I mean, it's not like I wanted to buy this. It's the only one they had in the used bookstore that I go to. And um, um, I have like more Bon Disney that I would like to cover in this channel. So let me know what you thought. Um, let me know if you thought, I mean, if it's a good idea to cover also the story, which I think is makes a video a little bit more entertaining than just going, just me going over random stuff. So, uh, again, thank you for watching, and this is Boris. Please like and share and subscribe, and um, until next time, um, this is Boris for Sketchman Draws, signing off.